Good day. Good day, Josh. Good day, Manga Chat Katiers. How is everyone doing on this beautiful Tuesday? Oh, I'm doing good. How about you? I'm all right. Eating a whole big sack of nuts this morning, have you? No, I've uh, had egg on toast, um, a bit of yogurt, and uh, what else? Yeah, that's it. What about you? There was a brief pause for a second. I thought you were going to say, yes, I've chain eaten another bag of almonds, and I'm going to blame it on the small bits of chocolate in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to hear that that's not the case. I, I had some reheated pancakes and a coffee, a uh, pretty quick breakfast. Uh, banana oh, pancakes. So. Wait, oh, banana syrup? Yes, I had some maple syrup on them. Yeah, a quick one. And then I was off to the post office, Josh, to post your copy of uh, of What Awaits Them by, by Liam Cobb. Um, we got two copies in the mail from Breakdown Press. I think we're going to have Liam Cobb on in the next week or so. The book's out today, I think. They just had a party at uh, Gosh Comics in London. But um, the books have arrived quite late here. But I sent you your copy, Josh. I'm a man of my word. I went to the post office and it cost $10. So you're welcome. You didn't do, uh, did you do media mail? Uh, hang on. Oh, God, I've got a bloody phone call coming in. Decline. Leave me alone. It's Jack Cohen. Leave me alone. She's off with Klaus in New York. Leave me alone. I'm on a stream. Sorry, what was the question there, Josh? Um, fuck. What did you say? Something about this book, the $10 that I had to pay to send this to you. media mail? How was it, why was it $10? Well, I wanted it to get to you quickly so we could, you know, because we're supposed to have Liam Cobb on the show. So I was like, the media mail is going to take like, you know, 14 days or something. So yeah. I'm getting it there by, th it cost me $10 to get it there by Thursday. Um, uh, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, so in the future, we're going to have to figure it out. I, I thought like we'll get publishers if they want to feature their books on the show to send them to me and I'll send you your copy. But then if it's going to cost me like $10 every time. Mm -hmm. But then to ask the publishers to send separate books to each of us, that's costing them money. So they'll be like, oh, Manga Chat's kind of shit. Is this really worth it? Probably not. Look at the viewing figures. Um, yeah. But anyway, your copy's on the way. It looks fantastic. I recommend everyone picks up the uh, the Liam Cobb book. There's some lovely, lovely stuff in here. I'm trying to find a hot spread, but, you know, he's known for all of this Michelin Man stuff. And he used to do lots of nice Rizo books. A big collection of them. There's a good one in here called Green Graves. Uh, I like that one during his Shroud period, when everyone used to call him Shroud Jr. That's a hot spread. You know, doodly kind of experimental cartooning, decent stories. There's a cowboy one in here, this uh, this cowboy story I, I quite like a lot. Um, slow drift. I've got most of the zines. Um, yeah, different genre stuff in here. Some good stuff. We'll probably be getting old old Cobb, old Liam Cobb on. The Cobb with your Yeah, with your permission, Josh. He lives what, in Reykjavik Cobb's now. He lives in Reykjavik? It like is where? in Reykjavik. Yeah, Iceland. I've, I've oh, been to Reykjavik. It's lovely over in old Reykjavik. Yeah. Um, it's like a less shitty version of Tasmania, kind of. Uh, yeah. 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 Someone here says, um, Magna Chat five away from 1K subscribers, which, yeah, tell your friends because we want to monetize this. We need to get some yeah, yeah. Going. Yeah, we need our 20 cents a month or whatever it pays, and we're really excited about that to offset the price these books to you josh yeah 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 tell your friends we like the uh i don't know like a cool alternative kind of kayfabe yeah, yeah. less professional <laughs> less less well put together maybe oh um, yeah professional uh what's that josh maybe more professional who knows it's up to the viewers to decide but yeah they're, they're bucketing in almost a thousand fucking hell yeah. Anyway, what's what's any comics news? The the big CXC festival was over the weekend. CXC um, happened. I muted about fifty people. I was tired of seeing it. And <laughs> it just like seemed yeah. like it seemed like there's like the same eight people over and over again. I was like, I got, I got muted. It did seem like a mild circle jerk. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know, people, the kids seem to be having fun there at the, the old CXC. Um, yeah. I saw that the person who won the, the big prize, the big uh, $7,500 prize, uh, immediately started moaning about um, – what, what did they say? They they couldn't just accept the prize with good grace and say, wow, this is fantastic. Like They started going on about probably exploitative residuals from big publishers and minimum wage advances on your work. It's coming from someone who's published about 30 pages of comics themselves in the last three years. Uh, so I don't know what they know about this. Um, and they also said about indie comics publishers, sometimes you'll be lucky to get comps. 
Well, I've got 14 publishers around the world in 14 different languages, and I always get my comp. So I don't know where they're hearing this stuff. Maybe there's some scummy publishers out there not sending out their comps, but if there are, I've not really heard of them. You know, I don't know. I guess they've heard that somewhere, but that just rubbed me up the wrong way. And just like, just accept the prize with good grace. You've been given a lot of money. Uh, it's a shock that you won. Um, you should be excited, but you know. Anyway, it contrast that with the Alex Graham posted a thing the other day on Instagram talking about being a young artist and and just saying like you know don't rush it, don't rush the success or force people into a corner into giving you success. You want people to enjoy your artwork from a genuine place, not from a place of obligation or social retribution or retribution. And just you know have a social life, be fun. Don't prioritize the social aspects of your chosen art form above the craftsmanship and your journey of self betterment. Enjoy your own company and tune into the spiritual aspect to your creative journey and you'll never be alone. That's the kind of talk I like when we're talking about comics. Uh, I yeah, think... really inspiring post from uh, Alex. It was, uh, yeah. Especially that stuff about um, getting caught up in the social aspect of it, not the craft of it. You know, it was, uh... Yeah, I mean, she was saying go out and have fun and live, but also the craft. Like, you know, it's finding that work-life balance and... But yeah, inspirational stuff. That's what I want young artists to be looking at and taking away and like not this bitter kind of moaning and like, oh, the industry. I'm not even a part of the industry, but meh. Like it's it's just a thing. I, I would find there's so much of that right now. It's like, yeah. I don't even know what they meant about probably exploitive residuals. Like that sounds like WGA union talk. Like are you just all wet over that union? And like what? That doesn't even make sense. Like you get the... You get the royalties that you that you're owed, <laughs> like, and like you you're not owed a, a minute. You, you, uh, exploitive residuals or a minimum wage advance. You're not going to get 180 grand, like you know, three years wages or whatever, like 60 grand a year on a book that's going to sell 2,000 copies if you're lucky. Like the market won't support that. Like this this, t Josh, you and I are both we self publish. We're with publishers. You know, we're making a living off this stuff. Like, we're working so hard. I mean, it's not easy. Like, you have to constantly be on. But I did all this moaning about the publishers. Take it into your own hands. We, you know, deal with publishers when it's advantageous for us. But we're mostly self-publishing. And just if you make, vi you know, work that excites you and that people like, they'll buy your work. It's It's always pushing the snowball up the hill and trying to push yourself. But you just have to slowly grow it and just... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I, a lot of, of moany talk coming out of CXC. I agree. I, just, I don't even want to go to these festivals anymore because it's just all these moaning cunts. It's just like, I, you know, if I'm turning up there, I just want to, like, sell my books to my fans, have a laugh, have a good time. Yeah, I was thinking a lot I, about um, we have plans to possibly do Comic-Con this year and how much, like, fun I think that's going to be compared to a lot of these, like, you know, festivals yeah. just because it's like... It's not our people. It's going to, you know, I, I, I kind of want to bark at these uh, Harry Potter cosplayers. And, um, <laughs> well, cosplay is like, fun. It, get like to me, comic, comics people into our thing, you know. Well, comic, comic Con's business folk. We went there, we did business contacts and just did press stuff and just, you know, met some cool people. There were a lot of fans there and we hung out with them and just, I don't know, like we, money, we didn't make a ton of money, but we just had a great fucking time. Yeah, yeah. And it was free, paid for. That was nice. Well, that was nice. I mean, you know, but yeah, we, we didn't sell a lot of merch or anything, but that wasn't, you know, it's like we're going to short run. Like, I don't even think I'm, I'm not going to have a new book ready. I don't give a shit. Like, you know, there's a bunch of free stuff I want to give out. I kind of just want to see my friends, hang out with Alex Graham, have a little art show yeah. and hand out free shit to people. To, so they'll be excited. Like, oh, wow, free shit. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Very excited about short run. Uh Hang out. Well, we're gonna have Brian Bubbles with us on you know, Airbnb. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, Jasper Juvenville will be there. I'm doing the art show with Alex Graham. There'll be you know a bunch yeah. of people around. Short Run's still a fun show. There's you know there's lots of moaning cunts there, but there's also lots of normal people and just like you know real cartoonists and just you know the fun people. So it's a it's a good mix, and that's fair. That's what I like. A good mix. Everyone's welcome. You know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, big big cancellation rumors coming out of CXC as well. One of those uh, sort of white knight, kind of like super virtuous type cartoonists, always on the Twitter, like pretending they're like super good and canceling people. Four what was it four emotional abuses and a rape or something? So yep, yeah, of course. Um, obviously, uh, 
obviously covering something up with all the virtuous behavior online. Like, Josh, you and I, we just, we, we're cunts. I, I'm not pretending to be a nice guy. You know, you're pretty sassy as well. Like, we're just, you know, a couple of good time cunts. I will say, like, you know, I don't want to say what it is, but there's like, you know, rumors swirling around as a, as there usually is, you know, every, every couple of times a year. And, um, yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the people think are like the mean guys of comics. It, you know, it's the it's the people on Twitter uh, making sure everyone knows how great they are constantly and how virtuous and pure yeah, that's, they are. And yeah, it's always every, it's, it, it almost seems like uh, like clockwork is the same every time. It's kind of the stereotype these days. The super virtuous types are clearly covering for something, and uh, something always comes out. But. Uh, yeah. yeah anyway it's just funny people like bitch about us like with these evil bastards or something it's like mm -hmm, yeah okay do we just get in the kit you know generally just getting our work done and just kind of having fun um, yeah chatting manga chat yeah happily married for nine years uh, going on 10 with a kid you know not really a threat to anyone i don't like leaving the house um yeah, and the rumors could be bunk. Like, we're not going to name names on this channel. I don't believe in that. I, I, I'm not just going to instantly fucking believe these rumors. I mean, maybe, um, but yeah, you don't know. But yeah, at least salacious rumors. That's what happens at these festivals. Just like salacious rumors swirling around, and yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You know, tale as old as time. Yeah. So this person, yeah, no. Clyde, Clyde's, Clyde doesn't even know what this scene is yet, but he's asking if it'll be available outside of short run Clyde you don't even know what the zine is it might be absolute, might be nothing might be absolute shit why are you excited well, not, and you don't know what it is yet I mean you know you know what the zine is Josh and it's fucking amazing it's going oh, to be incredible this is, I think it's going to be the uh, it's going to be an event thing it's going you know it's going to be massive yeah it's going to be something you want uh, alternative yeah. comics fan um, but it's going to have weird distribution there will be chances for you to get it outside of short run but not easily like we're not just going to be selling it online um it'll pop up in random places bus stations uh under trees shelters um yeah and you know you'll have to track them down but you, you'll have a chance to get them i'm sure they'll end up on ebay well, uh... all right simon's frozen um while we wait for him i'll do some uh, questions Someone says, believe all the rumors. I'm not sure about that. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's difficult with this stuff. They're trying to shut us down, Josh. Oh, uh, you're back. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think the uh, organizers of CXC, is that what, like Dennis Kitchen or someone is getting into our uh, – that's not Dennis Kitchen. <laughs> It was Tom Spurgeon. It was started by, I think, Tom Spurgeon and uh, Jeff Smith, uh, both great guys. Um, and the Caitlin McGurk, I think, has a lot to do with the Billy Island. Love Billy Island. Love Caitlin McGurk. Uh, some great people involved. We're getting uh, too close to the truth here, and uh, the bone man is trying to shut us down. <laughs> yeah, I hope Jeff's doing okay. He had that heart attack uh, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago. I hope he's doing all right. I hope the recovery's going okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, but yeah, we're talking about the zine. Well, we'll, we'll announce it closer. I've almost finished my strip for it, and we're going to put it all together and get it off the printers and get it ready. It's going to be great, and then we'll do a big announcement about where you can hopefully pick one up. Um, yeah, yeah. Bit. In, in exciting comics news, Josh, if you'll allow me, it's Monica Day. It's out. That means uh, I can go to partners and get it. To okay, I'm going to go get that today. Yeah, it's out today. Now, if you'd like to have the entire book spoilt for you from front cover to back cover and all the major themes discussed before you've even got off work and had a chance to buy it, get on over to Cartoonist Kayfabe because they've just for an hour and 20 minutes gone through every page of the book, every page of the book and just complete major spoilers on everything. Again, before anyone's even had a chance to get off work or buy the book. Um, so they, they're just desperate to talk about it, I guess, desperate for the clicks. Um, Josh and I are a bit more casual over here at Manga Chat, so we're just going to say Monica is out today. We both read it months ago, and we've discussed with the editor all the major themes of it. We know what's going on in it, but mum's the word. Shh, enjoy it. Go out, get the book unspoiled, and, yeah, check it out. It's really fucking great. Josh, yeah? I think, uh, probably, for me, book of the year, maybe book of the five year, maybe decade. I don't know. It's one of those. It's, yeah. It's, it, it's, you know. It's a remarkable achievement. Yeah, 
It's a small book, but it's big. It feels big. It feels massive. It's, you know, special. Yeah, it's, it's 106 pages of comics content. And it took me about two hours to read it. It's quite dense. It doesn't look that dense, but it is. I, I don't know. I, I read through it at my own pace, not too slow. I think just, you know, the pace that is demanded by the work. Um, you know, I've been reading comics for a long time. I think I know how to read a fucking comic. Um, I wasn't going too fast or too slow. Anyway, it's great. Go go check that out. It's really, really uh, great. I read it in your house and it was kind of just before the um, Skylight Books launch. So it's kind of, I had like a small window of time to read it. And it was, I was worried I wasn't going to finish it because it is so dense and it does, you know, it takes a lot longer than you'd think for a hundred page book. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, going to reward rereadings as well. Like, it's like a puzzle. I said it's a bit like Mulholland Drive in a way. Just you have to kind of think about it and kind of like, ooh, what could that mean? And I noticed in the kayfabe chats, there was a lot of people talking about it and stuff. And I think someone kind of hit the nail on the head of what maybe is going on in there. But, uh, yeah, it's a fun one to talk about. Poor Cowdery. Cowdery was here at my house and um, he got to read about half of Monica and then he had to leave. Yeah. And I tortured him. I, yeah, finally he'll be able to pick his up and finish the damn thing. But. I can't imagine reading half of it and then having to get on a fucking plane. Yeah. Crapmaster Zach wants to know if he should blaze before reading it. I think I think it's uh, too information heavy to do that, but, you know. Yeah, I'd, I'd go in sober on this one. I think you just want to be starkly sober. I think maybe at night. I think, like, when you get that sort of romance vibe in the, in the darkness of the night, there's a different feeling at night. I think that would be the time to read it. Yeah. I just, you know, whenever you like. We're not going to demand that you read comics in a certain way. You do you, crap master Zach. You get as fucked up as you want. You get in a big K-hole. You, you get you get all nodding off your Fenty. And, you know, you get into it, mate, and just enjoy it however you like. Yeah, exciting stuff. Should I get the Fanta edition or the cheaper vintage edition? What's the – I don't I don't think there is a cheaper vintage edition. <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a joke or uh... – uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, as far as I know, this is the Fantagraphics edition, or you can get like a Spanish Fulgencio one, or I can't remember who's doing the French one from Cornelius, I'd imagine. Um, no, wait, shit, no, sorry, that's a bit of a faux pas. It's not. That's a. It's not Cornelius. That's a. That's a bit of a sore point there. Actually, <laughs> it's a major faux pas. I've just said. Um, yeah, no, check it out. Uh, changing the subject, I, I got my. I got my funny pages whoopee cushion. Oh, that's nice. It Johnny says Ryan. a real Johnny Ryan. It says a real Trenton jeer instead of a Bronx cheer. A Trenton jeer. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that's a very fun piece of merch. This was like only four bucks or six bucks. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. But it's a whoopee cushion. I'm gonna try and trick my daughter with this later on. She sits in like a little miniature chair. I'm gonna put that under it, and she's gonna like. She's gonna freak out. She's gonna yeah. shit. <laughs> but yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah still, cool. re still reeling. I'm still reeling, Josh, from my viewing of funny pages. Are you, are you going to go and get the whoopee cushion? What? No, no I'm not. What, wait, something's happening here. I don't understand. You're not going to buy the whoopee cushion? I'm not going to buy the whoopee cushion, no. Really? Oh, that's shocking. It's a great collectible. I thought you'd want to have that in your collection, this, uh, this, uh, this fart balloon. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'll skip that one. Well, from from the same uh, from the same website I got for, from Alara Pictures, um, I got the the telemarketing guys comic by Abraham Diaz, which is a tie into that show Telemarketing, Josh, that you were talking about, and I still only watched half of. Uh, how is that? Yeah. I haven't read it. It just turned up last night, and I've been my, my wife's away with Dan Klaus in, in New York, uh, so I haven't had the time to sit down and relax. Um, I slept for like twelve hours last night because I, I put the baby down. She falls asleep, and I'm too scared to move her into a bassinet because if she wakes up going like "Mama, Mama," then it's just like "Oh, I'm Dad." Like "Boo, who wants Dad?" So she won't calm down. So once she's asleep, uh, that's it. So I just lie in the bed with her. And I slept for like twelve hours and all these insane fucking dreams. Uh, yeah, nice. no chance, no chance to read this. But yeah, it was a good night. I, I liked it. I, you know, I don't get to sleep that much anymore. So you know, so getting down for a twelve-hour kit, it's quite nice. Yeah. But yeah, this looks this looks fun. I'm, I'm a big Abraham Diaz fan, and I'm not sure if it's a real movie tie or if he's doing his own thing, but it looks fun. I got the whoopee cushion and this in the same package. This was a fun package to receive in the mail. Again, Imagine, this was quite cheap. Where did you get that from? 
from uh, Alara Pictures dot com. E L A R A Alara Pictures. They they sell a little fun merchandise. Yes. Uh, they did different. They had like a funny pages Johnny Ryan comic um, that was sold out, unfortunately. So I missed the ball on that. Oh, Johnny come lately, Hanselman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks fun. Well, do you, are you going to pick that one up, Josh? You can't be fucked. Oh, I'll, I'll get. Maybe I'll get that one. Uh, well, let me know. If, uh, let me know if it is a tie into the show. If it's not just a separate okay. thing. But... but I mean, can you look at the whoopee cushion while you're at it? I mean, you, you, if you went there and you got this and not the whoopee cushion, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? It's so right, fun. Maybe. I'll have a look. I'll see what the shipping's like. I'll, uh, I'll have a look. I'm trying to like bully you into buying a whoopee cushion. So we can, yeah. uh, yeah. It's going to be fun at short run. Uh, getting people with that. We can go around and uh, stick it on people's <laughs> chairs. And... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to buy them in bulk. I'm going to buy a case of them and uh, dress up like the Hamburglar and creep around short run, putting them under people's chairs. And little mustard packets as well, like McDonald's sauce packets. They sit down and... <laughs> get sauce all over their asses nice um what else was i got something a new book out tomorrow can you guess josh the new book out tomorrow that both you and i are going to be interested in um who, who's the publisher drawn and quarterly drawn and in quarterly. canada hmm. um drawn and quarterly tomorrow it's a bit mangary you're having trouble aren't you like a drawn and quarterly book that i'd want to read like, Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you're having trouble it's the Suge collection, uh, the new Suge. I've got the previous yeah. two over here. Where are they? Yeah, fantastic editions, you know, the, your classic Ryan Holmberg translations. The third one is coming out with the, uh, the screw style story in it, the famous screw style. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I've got mine coming in the mail. It's shipped. It's coming tomorrow. But, yeah, I think Ryan Holmberg's doing, like, a special event on the Drawn and Quarterly Instagram. So if you're interested, you can go on over there and check that out. and. Uh, You'll be picking that one up, I imagine, Josh. Yeah, I'll be getting that one. I might actually get all three together. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think this is like, you know, the earlier work they're kind of going through it chronologically, like, because we love The Man Without Talent. But, you know, this 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 stuff's clearly earlier work. But I think the third volume that's coming out tomorrow is sort of getting more up to the, you know, more modern era, the a, a, a era that you and I are into. Um, yeah. yeah. No, very I mean, transitional, good work, apparently. You know, very buzzed about work. Yeah. I actually did try and go um, – the only book I tried to buy uh, buy this week was um, I went to buy Sunday. I walked up to Partners to oh. buy Sunday, and they only had the big – they didn't have the earlier issues. They only had the, the fat ending of it. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Fanta edition will come out eventually. I'm sure that's probably in the works if everyone involved knows what's good for them. Um, God, so I just freaked out. I just thought I saw Harry Nordlinger here for a second, but it's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, with the curly hair and the beard, I just I just feel like I look like a, like a, you know, I was going to say oh, more yeah. handsome, but conceivably less handsome Harry Nordlinger, depending on your on your taste. Yeah, yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> So it's a bear and twink thing choice, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> you like the beard? Uh, it's interesting. It's you know, it's 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 I don't know. Probably gonna. It's it's gotten less itchy, so that's good. It was unbearable for a few days. Um, might just shave it off and just have a moustache for a few days, and then just I, go back to bald face. I was just gonna say that. Uh, you know, like every trying the moustache for a bit. I think uh, every cartoonist has to go through their moustache phase. Well, I did years ago. I uh, I had a moustache for a long time. I grew it for a joke in 2008, and then I got into a five-year relationship and was unable to shave off the moustache. I, I was told that I'd, I'd look like a stranger, so I was forced to keep the moustache. I, I really wanted to get rid of it. I, I almost got a job once, and they said, you'll have to shave off the moustache. I was like, oh, thank God. I can be like, not my fault. I have to shave it off. Um, yeah, I kept it for a long bloody time uh, against my will. Um, I was... Yeah. I, I was emotionally abused, Josh, um, into having facial hair. <laughs> I think so. I think uh, trying to make you a different kind of man, yeah. It's, uh... Well, yeah. It was during the height of my gender dysphoria phase, so it was, it was tough to care to have the moustache. It was, oh, it was tough, Josh. Big first world problems. Oh, sounds, uh, it sounds oh. actually quite horrific. Um... It was torture. Shit torture every day. Every day was like waking up in a coffin and just eating shit. Hiding your razors, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just find them like you know, yeah, in the bin. Oh, so 
Yeah, yeah. Anyway, have, have you seen the Max? Do you remember this? No, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's the old Sam Keith uh, Image Comics. I used to read them when I was a kid, but this is the MTV series. I just picked this up the other day. No. I don't know about it. Yeah, MTV adaptation of the Max. I just saw Chris Wisnia, the Wiz. You know the Wiz. Kid, yeah, a yeah. friend from Comic Con. We're going to get on the show at some point. We've got to get the Wiz on. We're going to see him at Short Run. But uh, yeah. he worked on a comic with Sam Keith. He was like doing style mimicry and like drawing like Sam Keith. But yeah, one of the more interesting early image books. Really weird stuff. I, I love Sam Keith. Um, amazing, weird, big footed cross hatcher. Uh, weird, weird story. Um, sort of a homeless man, the Max, who wears this weird costume and he has all these delusions about being in the Australian outback. And yeah, it's a sexy, kind of weird, uh, odd, uh, creepy series. But excited. Archivist. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it, yeah. It's just they keep deleting shows from streaming sites. Like you, you know, you have to own this stuff if you want to see it. Really, I, I'm not a pirater. I like to buy things and actually support the artists and the companies behind them. So, just uh, Target, I think, is um, abandoning physical media in terms of DVDs and Blu-rays. I'm really? very upset about this. In Australia, Disney's not doing any more Blu-rays and DVDs. So I think to force people onto the streaming, onto Disney+, Plus because it's failing and doing really badly, probably because of the shit programming. Um, but, yeah, so you're going to have to own this stuff, you know, unless you want to watch these edited fucking versions with all disclaimers on them or just they're gone. So the, the revival of Mr. Show on uh, Netflix – uh, during the height of 2020, they just deleted a whole episode because of like a you know, Key and Peele uh, were in it, like a blackface sketch. Um, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't pro blackface, obviously. I mean, a bit bit weird if Bob Odenkirk and David Cross were pro blackface, but they just deleted the whole episode. They could have cut out the three minute sketch. Whole episode got deleted. Um, it's happened for a lot of shows. So yes, I am becoming an archivist, Josh. I am trying to even like. You know, even like country specific stuff, like it's so hard to find any Alan Partridge or Louis Theroux or any BBC stuff. Yeah. yeah. It was all on HBO Max for a while, HBO Go. Or so, you know, they had all the Partridge stuff and then just pfft, gone. Uh, Peep Show was all on uh, the, the, the TV show, not the comic by Joe Matt. Uh, Peep Show got deleted off of Hulu and now it's on like, I don't even know. Like, some fucking shit one I'm not going to bother to sign up for. I've got the DVDs, and it's all on YouTube anyway because Channel 4 are pretty lax in policing that stuff. But yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's important. Just, uh, you know, I, I, when, my, when my kid's old enough, I need to try and force all these dusty old British blackface sitcoms onto her. And she's going to be like, oh, I don't want to watch the Mighty Boosh, Dad. But, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> like, Sit down and watch your menstrual show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mammy. Yeah, come on, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. But yeah, no, I'm just trying to collect all this stuff that I like. Um, and it so pisses me off that, like, you know, I can't get certain Julia Davis shows or Kevin Eldon stuff. It's just not on DVD. Um, yeah. I'm going to boot, bootleg that. I, I just I don't like, know. I was talking to uh, Roman Moradov about this. It's so fucking impossible to find uh, Stuart Lee's alternative comedy vehicle. The uh, Yeah. That's, like, not... You just can't. There's no way you can watch that. I've got all four seasons of Comedy Vehicle on DVD and all of Stu's stand-up specials, bar the most recent one, which I don't know if I'll enjoy. Um, yeah, but but yeah, I can't. I can't watch it anywhere. I think it's on BBC iViewer or something. You got to fuck around with all VPNs and fuck about. And I just no, just sell it to me. I want to go on fucking Amazon or Apple. I'm willing to pay for it. Yeah, it's it's really frustrating all the region shit and this. It, you know. The streaming wars and it's just it's it's fucking chaos um yeah. oh i won my my grew lot speaking of archiving yeah. i won that big lot of grew comics i think it cost me 250 dollars for 98 issues of grew the wanderer so you know basically 250 a unit including shipping i couldn't pass it up seemingly no one else cared um I was down there, I was like on the toilet, like waiting, it's ticking down. I was like, someone's going to pip me and get in. I was ready to like, and then no, I won. Um, yeah, $179 plus like uh, $70. In, yeah, they're mine. So, uh, can people look forward to some uh, content of you going through the first 90 issues of Groove? Yeah, you and I, Josh, you're going to have to do it with me. We're going to do kayfabe style. We're going to go through all the first 95 issues of Grew the Wanderer and just do full spoilers and just show the whole things off. 
So you don't even have to bother buying them. You can just screen cap the episode of Kayfabe and you've got Monica. Don't even bother buying it. Don't support Dan Klaus. Just read the whole book on Kayfabe. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, we love Kayfabe here. I love the Piss yeah. Man. I love Jimmy Ruggs. Um, well, they've never had me on the show. I don't know if they will now. Um, yeah. yeah. That's weird. Uh... It was talked about for a while. I don't know, you know, publicists were trying to get me on there, and but they just, I don't know. But yeah, I've had some lovely times with Ed, traveling around Anger Lamb and us flying back home together, and lovely guy. Um, a lot of respect for Ed Piscor. A yeah. lot of these cunts shit on him. A lot of these little little pricks. They're always making fun of Ed, but uh, I think he's great, great at what he does. Um, good businessman. Great good to his family. Good the, guy. Uh, ancient comics, I think, yeah. What's that, Josh? A uh, great bridge between like indie and mainstream comics. Yeah, and they are doing a good job over there at Kayfabe. Um, you know, I personally wish they'd talk about more alternative stuff and boost that up, but th maybe they're sick of all the sniping in the alternative scene and just how fucking lame it is. So they're I like, mean, ah, fuck you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I, I think one, like, you know, one faction of comics really like embraced them and the other one was kind of like a little bit shitty and like, thank you, you know, are you, you know, in like, you know, a pretty cunty way. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some sort yeah. of feeling of like, oh, fuck, fuck you, you know? Well, I, I don't think they think about it like that. I think they probably just focus on the stuff they love, as we do over here. I mean, we just, yeah. we don't really shit talk stuff. We never bring up books and say, this sucks. You have a bit of a snipe at people and the scene and stuff, you know, the politics of the scene. But I certainly don't ever want to be like, you know, this person sucks. Like, they're awful. Like, don't buy their books. That's... I wouldn't yeah. like it if someone was doing that about me or trying to besmirch my name and take food out of my child's mouth. So, and get on your kayfabe, um, you know, keep doing it. Um, we'll keep doing our thing. Yeah. I've got another another eBay find here, Josh. Yeah. You, you know I'm a big fan of the Fort Thunder, the, the woofy, puffy noise comics from the early 2000s. And I never had the, the Fort Thunder issue of the Comics Journal from like That's 20 years ago. Yeah, Tom Spurgeon rest writes like a ton of stuff and big interviews with like you know matt brinkman brian chippendale brian ralph some of the key players from fort thunder so yeah i'm really seems like a, a wealth of history in here like a real time capsule incredibly informative i'm really looking forward to digging into this i think i got this for 20 bucks or something i bought it from someone called scott who then wrote to me on ebay and said oh my god i just printed out the label i didn't realize it was you simon hanselman and like i'm a big fan and i said, oh that's awesome man and I, I got the book though it stinks of cigarettes like yeah. I, I unwrapped it out of the plastic and josh like it smelled like an ashtray like it just fucking i wrote to scott and i said mate i'm worried about you like thanks for the kind words and this this book fucking stinks and like you got to stop smoking the smokies man you got to tone it down it's like I, I just fear what all your books look like and um he was like oh my god i'll give you a refund and it's like no 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 i'm just i want the i want i don't care it just i just want to like basically just roll it up and like and smoke the fucking thing it's just i quit smoking it's making me crave cigarettes like i'm looking at this thing and just like oh, fuck, i want a fucking cigarette I feel yeah, no, absolutely fucking mortified. Yeah, I think my sense of humor sometimes, like my wife says to me, like, you think you're being funny and that people are in on the joke, but sometimes they're not. So, yeah, I think he was like, oh, no, Simon's mad at me because of the smokes. But I was just being folksy and just, you know, if he thinks yeah. that I was actually legitimately worried about him and his smoking habit, like, you know, I'm not. Like, you know. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I'm very excited to dig into this. And just, it was just fun to see the old old comic scene stuff you know just all the old ads and yeah 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 it's just yeah it's a different time two decades ago you know so, what year is that uh, i think it was 2003 yeah like scenes from xb sbx back in the day and stuff and speaking of we were on the comics journal today with uh photos of us from chris diaz I saw, I saw. We got our shout out in the New Yorker the other day and then we're on the Comics Journal and the Chris Diaz photo thing. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, and uh, was it Nicole Rifkin did a cover for um, the New Yorker and in, a, in the cover story interview, shouted us out along with Noah Van Sky, but that was really nice. Yeah, it's like the 2003 uh, Ignatz winners and stuff. Charles Burns actually won for Black Hole. That uh, never happened these days, never. Tell us who who were the winners in that year. Anyone? Um, like, they'll know. 
few people I've not heard of, and like you know, Jason Shiger. I know Jason Shiger does Demon and stuff. Nick Batozzi, um, James Kachalka, Jeffrey Bound, bunch, bunch of yeah, bunch of white guys and a few token Asians. What did what did Burns win? Uh, outstanding series for Black Hole, rightfully so, because it is one of the most outstanding series of all time. Yeah. Oh, Ted Stern was nominated. Rest in peace, Ted. Fucking died a few years ago. It was really sad. Yeah, Derek Dirk Kim and you know, Mark Bell was nominated. Bunch of people. But, yeah, yeah. Nice. Who is the yeah, uh, no. anybody in the uh, promising new talent thing that are still that are still around? Or did, did they? Even uh, do I don't think they did that. Oh, promising new talent. Yeah, Mark Bell. He's still around. John Hankowitz still around. Raina Telgemeier, fucking hell, promising new talent indeed. Fucking hell, she's gone on to be like the biggest success in comics ever. Um, bravo. Yeah, and a two, you know, one guy, Ray Friesen. No, haven't heard of him. Sorry, Ray, if you're out there, if you're watching. He's like, oh, oh my career died. But yeah, no, it's interesting to look back on this and the history and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. And semen, semen stain on here, a bit, bit wet. Um, I think Scott, in, in addition to his insane smoking habit, He's also jizzed on the corner of the book here a little bit, or it was in his toilet. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I got this. I got this onion onion book. This is soaked in semen as well. This is like really rough. There's there's something eBay. Just, I keep getting semen soaked products. Um, yeah. Did you used to read the Onion back in the day? No, uh, I mean uh, they had the free newspaper in Chicago, so I'd see it around, but no, I never really yeah. read it. This is where the Onion was good. This is the stuff from the 90s. This is a 2001 collection. I remember my, my dad, who was never around, gave me a bit of money. Like uh, I think he gave me $2,000 for my 18th birthday. And it was the most money I'd ever had. I mean, it was just like insane. Like, whoa, like, oh, he's, all of his guilt over the years for abandoning the family's paid off. And I went downtown and I bought a copy of, of this and a copy of uh, 69 Love Songs by the Magnetic Fields, which I'd read about in an Ivan Brunetti comment. He said his favorite song ever was 10,000 Fireflies by the Magnetic Fields. And I was like, I need to check out that band. And you know, it wasn't the time when I could go on the internet and listen to it all for free. So I had to pony up for the album. And initially I didn't like it, but then I grew to, I love the Magnetic Fields and that album is fantastic. But, but yeah, funny stuff in here. Uh, I used to have this in my toilet for years. Incredible stuff in here. Really, really fucking funny. Um, and I do think the onions fallen off in the last like decade or so. AV Club as well. Club used to be incredible, yeah. like oh. ten years ago for yeah for pop culture commentary and reviews and stuff. The AV Club is utter dog shite now. Um, it's just, it's it's really it's really depressing. You've just reminded me of a really vivid memory um, of like the one year I got like a hundred pounds for uh, my for my birthday it was like that was like a lot and um we went to toys r us and i got some power rangers roller skates oh happy yeah. days that's a good one yeah i love those treasured memories of just yeah getting a bit of money you know i won 25 dollars at a horse race once when i was like eight and i got to buy three gi joes and it's oh, like the cool. best it still lives in the memory it's like the the best days ever I yeah. think Joe Matt said about like fair weather, like that was the happiest time in his life, just being a kid and just collecting comics and just making little models and yeah. Oh, how sad! This nostalgic old man thinking about their Power Rangers roller skates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I did with the rest of that two thousand dollars from my dad. I mean, that was that was big money. I didn't go anywhere. I mean, I could have like uh, flown somewhere or done something. I was pretty too scared to go anywhere. I small town kid in tasmania i probably bought more books and stuff but probably blew it all on drugs frankly um, could, have been, could be in a bank somewhere building up interest we got like you know <laughs> ten thousand dollars at this point i'd say it's definitely in a small town drug dealer's pocket or they probably spent it on their own i, used to, years I ago. used to think about this all the time as a kid like i used i used to think about interest way more than i should have i was always like fantasized about like i should put like a uh, 20 pounds in the bank because by the time i'm you know 40 that'll be about you know that'll be a hundred thousand pounds that's really smart of you I, i've never thought like that um yeah, yeah. J jack jack has a friend who like he's just like crazy kind of hippie cyclist guy who like travels around the amazon with like like i'm just gonna walk into the amazon with a jar of peanut butter and get lost and you know, he always dies out in the Amazon. He's crazy, but he's like a millionaire from Apple stocks from when he was eight years old. He like as you as a young and he got this little bit of money. He's like, I want to put it into Apple stocks. I think Apple's going to be really big. 
and all of his family were like, oh, you're crazy. Like, what are you doing? You're a kid. Like, go and spend it on candy. But yeah. he was adamant. And he's a fucking millionaire now. And he does whatever he wants. And he's got a death wish, seemingly, and off into the Amazon. Uh, really interesting guy. Really nice guy. That's crazy. Uh, you know, actually, speaking of, like, adventurers, the uh, thing I watched this week, uh, did you see um, that documentary, like, Pepsi, Where's My Jet? You will love it. It's... Um, so it's like this guy in the 90s who like watched this commercial that was like uh, Pepsi points. You know, if you buy this many Pepsi and the ad is like you can get, um, what was it? Like you get like a jacket for like this much points. You get uh, like a beach ball for this many points. And there's a joke at the end that says like you can get a Harrier, a Harrier jet for 7 million points. And he worked out like he found this catalog that says like how much the points are to buy. And it's, it would be something like, it was, what was it like a couple hundred thousand dollars? So he got this. He's like this young guy, but he got his, this rich investor friend they had met to like buy enough points to get the jet. And then he goes to court and he's like trying to sue them to get the jet. And there's like a big fight back and forth. Really fucking crazy, but it's like all nice stuff. And it's you know, it's really it's really funny. And yeah, I recommend that. I, I, I do love a good. I love a nice nineties content so a contest scam. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had in Australia with like the paddle pops, these ice creams that like you collect all the sticks and stuff. But I think there was something like you couldn't win, like it was just like a fraudulent thing. I don't know. Correct me in the chat. Um, but yeah, little things like that. I, I you know love those little promotions. And yeah, yeah. I, I have a long story I won't tell, but just like the the ring pulls on the on the cans, like collect three ring pulls and get a free Dr Pepper. And this, yeah. they launched Dr Pepper in Tasmania, and this beer, a beer company had the same pools. So we, we went all over town to the city dump, and we got all these ring pools, and just had cases and cases of Dr Pepper. There was so much more to the story, but yeah, was... Co contests, scams. Yeah, yeah, I've got that written down in my bank of, uh, of stories. At some point, I have to do like a Megan Mog story about this big soda pop scam for Werewolf Jones and the boys out, you know, rum rummaging around for ring pools and trying to sell all this soda down at the school and getting in trouble. That's what I did. I tried to sell them at school, like going around, like, hey, cans of Dr. Pepper, only 50 cents. And <laughs> sell my zines at the same time. I was, a, I was a young businessman. I was always on the clock, as you have to be. Yeah. And that's that's why I'm where, I, where I'm at with my career for now before my mouth gets me in trouble and i'll bring josh down with me yeah a funny review this uh, i'll send it to you there was a funny review of the well jones book this morning uh, oh good speaking of my career being taken down uh, <laughs> really, really like, they said they threw it in the trash and they're quite upset about it why i don't know it says more it's about sad. them than it does about us <laughs> yeah i think so but yeah it gave me a gave me a little chuckle, but yeah. Yeah, that, that book is our truth. That's based on things that happened to us when we were children and our upbringings. And how dare you? How do you challenge our truths? It's very emotional work. Yeah. May come across as frivolous, edgy, or offensive to you. I just don't think you're reading it properly, are you? Maybe yeah. you know, go out and get some uh, get some old you know Donald Duck books or Rainer Telgemeier books for children or something that might be a bit more your speed. Yeah, might not have the faculties to process what's going on in the incredibly complex Werewolf Jones and Sons Deluxe Summer Fun Annual, which is available right now from Fanographics or your local library. So, is there any other comics news this week? Um, I've, I've got these here, Josh. I've got some yeah. breakdown press booklets here that I purchased oh. for money. I've got the they're doing a new pamphlet series of old pre war manga. It's uh, Jim Hemmingfield's done some design work on these. Nice. Nice hot press, sort of shiny stuff on the top of the riso here, but yeah, pre-war manga, really old manga. This is you know interesting stuff. This is you know it looks looks American in a way. I mean, it just looks like kind of yeah. You know, hang on, that's just that's the middle section, but yeah, it just looks like fucking Blondie or something, or like you know Yankee stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, Tezuka like loved Disney and all that stuff, and that inflected them, but. Yeah, very early post-war manga pamphlets. First in a series of old dusty manga. Um, excited about this. Nice. I also got the Chicken Scratch uh, sketchbook by JMKE, um, who I was telling an anecdote about last week about when Grant ate too many nuts. I was with uh, JMKE at the time. And this is her shirt. I actually I purchased this shirt 
from JMK when her, her tits detached a few weeks ago and, nice. and she was having she was having trouble and so I supported her by buying this shirt from her and it turned up in the mail. It was, it was all wrapped up in ribbons. She like wrapped it up like a present with all pink ribbons and really beautiful presentation. Um, but yeah, she has a new uh, sketchbook out from uh, from the Breakdown Press. Lots of doodly sketchbooks. And they might still have her Will of the Wisp uh, book, but yeah, recommended stuff. Uh, we love JMK. She's a uh, she's in a good punk band as well called Sniffiny in the Knits. So if you're a punk, check them out. Sound I like got one more here, Josh. I got the. Uh, Mangaka from the Tangerman from Floyd Tangerman. Now I looked at this in the morning and I was like, ah, oh, it's like waffle, like you know, it's just all scrappily drawn, crazy kind of you know underground whatever. Then late at night it was daddy time, and it was you know everyone was asleep in the house, mother and baby were asleep. It was like yeah, I'd done the dishes. It was late night, so you know I may have had an edible, I may have, I don't know. And I sat down and I read this cover to cover and I was utterly blown away. I had the best fucking time ever. The the drawings really just leapt out at me and like freaked me out. And I was just, I felt like an old hippie in the seventies. Um, yeah, I, I loved it. I dug it. Um, so if, yeah, if you want a weird trip, like a crap master Zach, if you want to get really fucking fucked up and read something, get the manga cut by, uh, by Floyd Tangerman. There you can pick it up from Domino books. I think Tangerman's on the, uh, the Instagram now. So you can go follow him. He's deigned to join Instagram. Oh, he actually signed it on the front here. I didn't notice because it's so fucking clusterfuck and crazy. But he did actually say, thanks, Simon, from Floyd Tangerman. That's nice. He yeah. says in the front as well, he talks about his drive-by shooting. I was shot in a drive-by shooting. I find Tangerman a very interesting cartoonist because he's always getting the drive-by shootings. He was literally shot three times in a drive-by shooting in San Fran a couple of months ago. Um, it's public knowledge now, I guess, because it's in here. But, um, yeah, amusing character. I love the Tangerman. Yeah, it says on there. It says underground comics. Yeah, I, I have also been. This might be up your alley, Josh. I, I started yeah, reading yeah. "Slash Them All" by Antoine Maillard. Uh, you seen this one? Yeah, yeah, uh, like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it came out last year from Fanta. Uh, yeah, lovely guy, Tom Maillard. I've hung out with him in France a few times. Absolute sweetheart. And yeah, I met him briefly in the short run. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. Outside, yeah, bit, bit. The bookstore mm. during, outside, the, outside the bookstore during the uh, commencement party or whatever. Yeah, it seems a bit black holy or something. It was like a murder in a small town and a bunch of teenagers, but beautiful pencil work. Like, yeah. Lovely close-up of this character there. Like... Uh, Lovely backgrounds. Uh, Maylard's an incredible illustrator. And, yeah, uh, I saw uh, in, in, in Chris Diaz's sketchbook, he has a big uh, Antoine Maillard drawing in there. And it's fucking, the pencils are like, he's using a different kind of pencil, you know? It's uh, something else. There's a beautiful overhead shot of this beach town. Um, yeah. yeah his, co his color stuff's incredible. He put like reds and greens in there. I have his Los Angeles sketchbook and it's, it's absolutely stunning. Um, but yeah, I, I get to read this thing. I, I read like a translated by him kind of early version in floppies years ago. And it was kind of like broken English from the French. I read the first few chapters. But yeah, rereading it and uh, really, really digging it. Oh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, very cinematic. Yeah. yeah, I'm enjoying that. It just came out, I think, last October from Fanographics, October 2022. But yeah, I'm not sure how much press this one got or how you know if it like went off on its own journey or if it just kind of like you know sometimes books that you think are going to be like you know big hits they just kind of yeah. putter along and then like mm, they pfft. yeah all things you think will be ah yeah, anyway all sorts of variables but yeah looks great check it out anyway yeah, it's possible to guess what's gonna like explode the what what it's impossible to guess what's going to explode and what's kind of going to just exist on bookshelves and stores, you know? Yeah. You know, like I, I saw the Emil Ferris book when it first came into Fanta all those years ago, the, the first chapter of Monsters and, um, well, and second, because it was submitted as first and second. But, um, yeah, you know, I was like, oh, this is amazing. But uh, I didn't predict it to become such a massive hit, and uh, you, know, it, you know, so successful and, uh, but, you know, incredible incredible looking work um yeah people just got really engaged and word of mouth spread yeah 
who is this Gary Atlas. He got a bunch of illustration work thanks to the US. Oh, okay, he got. I thought this was just bad grammar, but yeah, he got a bunch of illustration work thanks to the US edition of the book. Oh, uh, good, beautiful. good. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, he's, 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 uh, fucking incredible eyes. Yeah, he's built for the fucking New Yorker or the Los Angeles Times or whatever, you know, that sort of editorial illustration. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's most of my stack there. I've got a I've got a big stack of uh, reggae Villardson work here. I've been trying to work through. I want to talk about reggae Villardson, Danish cartoonist. I love her work. Um, might have to get you a copy of Cowboy Josh so you can read that. I'll get this sent over from the Fanta warehouse if I can and say, come on, to Manga Chat. We're going to sell two copies of this by talking about it on our small channel. But yeah, great book, great great uh, reggae Villardson, underappreciated in America and probably in Denmark, criminal. Uh, should we take some questions, Josh, from the audience? We yeah. go through these and see if there's any pertinent questions or non-poop non talk, um, and then we can wrap it up and get back to work. Let's do it. You see anything interesting in there? What's going on? Let me see. Uh, this person says, yes, underground comics. Um, Hope everyone's having a great day, uh, all you unemployed weirdos that actually comment on this. Um, Print Master's access net, which makes me think he's a Zoomer, actually. Kind of didn't really? Imagine, I didn't imagine that he'd be a Zoomer. Yeah, I imagine like a sort of corpulent 40-year-old in, in a filthy basement. Uh, yeah. Someone says Kayfabe fucked up the end of their Monica video, the Cycle Cleveland. I, I saw someone saying that was like a Sopranos ending in their comments. Yeah, you, oh, won't catch that, you won't catch that happening with us. Someone says better than Kayfabe. Fuck, what? shots fired. Uh, yeah. Shots fired, Josh. What new comments? Um, Crap Master Zach is 24. 24, wow. Spring chicken. Gosh, too Ooh. young to be watching this. You're a child. Yeah, Inktober, have you guys ever taken part? Fuck no. I don't have time for that no, bullshit. I think it's, um... No, I think it's... Uh... It's funny because uh, Cartoon Kayfabe does the um, Inktober and it's like they're... But I, I very much remember just before they started it, Ed... Um... Post on Instagram uh, is like, why are you losers doing Inktober? You should be drawing comics. Oh, <laughs> and now they've got their own branded one. Yeah, well, times they change. But yeah, no, I've never, I've never done. It. I've always got you know book to work on or deadlines or just I'm not quick enough. I guess quick cartoonists like you could do your warm up sketch at the start of the day, but yeah, it's it's not for me. Next year, Josh, after we've shat on it right now, next year we'll do the official manga chat Inktober and like you know. Tedward, you know, Meg, do, uh, Mrs. Tedward. We could do November. We could do uh, Mangvember. Well, we'll be doing Movember for sure. We'll have our moustaches. You go grow a big honking moustache for yeah. Movember, not Josh. For charity, though. Let's not do that for charity. Let's... No, the charity is me. Yeah. The charity is you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, not giving the money away. It's my moustache. Um, what, what's this? Oh, this sounds interesting. Okay, well, less said about I don't know about that. No, no comment. Uh, no comment. Jesus, I have to look into that. But I, I find that hard to believe because uh, the person in question is quite um, the other way on Twitter. I've noticed so that, that that sounds quite shocking to me. I don't really want to partake in that kind of gossip. Frankly, those gutter boys, minds in the gutter. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible podcast. No, no, they're lovely guys. I've been on Gutter Boys. You've been on Gutter Boys with friends with them. Lovely guys. Sometimes <laughs> I did, but you know, Cam, <laughs> Cam and JB are both some of my favorite people, but they get a little bit misguided sometimes. I'm sure people say the same thing about us, Josh. Um, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> people only have nice things to say about us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, someone just saying, yeah, Wally Grope is about the, the Suge book. Uh, Nezhishkishki. I have so much trouble with these titles. Nezhishkishki. Yeah, check that. I just say screw style. Um, someone says, last Comic Con I went to was 60% weeb, 40% squeak, or it's the people you go with that make it fun. Yeah, true. You know, we've all got our little tribes and stuff yeah. within the scene. Again, I don't say community. I say the scene. There's all different factions of the scene, all different umbrellas. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's got their little crew and their tribe. And we've got ours, Josh. Yeah, we're going to have a great time at Short Run. I can't fucking wait. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait for all the dirty looks on the floor. Yeah, probably, yeah. 
Well, we'll, we'll, we'll have whoopee cushions. So it'll be us who have the last laugh. Yeah, he will have whoopee cushions. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever meet Tom Spurgeon, Josh? The question I didn't. Here? No, uh, no, I didn't. Unfortunately, he's beloved, isn't he? Uh, you know. He was a lovely guy. I loved Spurgeon. He just he had this this hot lady friend, this like ginger realtor. Um, before he passed, like I met him, and I was like, "Damn, you're doing well there, Tom. Punching above your weight." And yeah, but anyway, died happy. I hope. Yeah, it was a real shame. I love Tom. Such an absolute sweetheart. And just yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was the, 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 uh, the comics journal I was showing off. It's Tom in there writing all this stuff. Like, he was a real, quite the scribe, a real historian. You know, he's very much missed. Yeah. My, my, fa my favourite story about Tom Spurgeon is um, I was at Cake one year. I'll just tell it quickly. In the hallway on the way to Cake, there's two chairs. I saw Tom sitting in one of them. I was like, how you doing, Tom? He was like, oh, terrible. I sit here in this chair and I sweat until the chair is wet. Then I move to the other chair and I sweat in that one until it's wet while the other chair dries in the sun. And then I move back, rinse and repeat. I was like, that's awesome, Tom. <laughs> he was having some health problems. Um, but yeah, he was just sitting in that chair. You know, he'd still flown out for cake and like, he wasn't feeling well. But he was just sitting, sweating in these chairs and just bouncing back and forth. But yeah, kind of a sad story, I suppose. But it was funny at the time. I also have a funny video from that same cake of her. I was like yelling at Jesse Jacobs when he was in the toilet. And uh, I don't know. And a great video of me imploring Noah Van Skyver to have a bite of my sandwich and just saying, eat my sandwich, you dumb bastard. That's a, I was looking at watching these videos the other week for some reason. I was digging through my hard drive and watching these funny videos from cake. Hmm? Is that the one where you got him sick? That was a tea calf. That was where I gave Noah a sip of my Red Bull and he oh, got really sick. I, I, yeah, I felt really bad. Um, then, yeah, so there was no way he was going to have a bite of my sandwich. <laughs> but yeah, that was the joke because I'd gotten him sick at the previous thing. So now I was like, eat my sandwich. It was very funny at the time. It was kind of like in between cartoonist humor, behind the table humor. Yeah. You, know, yeah. Uh, you don't see much of that anymore, do you? Like cartoonists draw another cartoonist in that way. Like little fun sketchettes and stuff. Yeah, I just don't see it that much. Like uh, I see, you know, people do it for flyers for events and stuff. But hmm. I'm sure they're doing it. Maybe we're just not seeing it. But people would still be drawing each other. It's a tale as old as time. Cartoonists at tables drawing each other. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, huh. but you get yeah because I think like in that everything together. I don't know where it is. Um, there's all the ones at the end of him. Where is it? Yes, yeah, so like near the end, it's like all the different. I was like, is it the Santoro's father one? By Harkham? Well, I remember this right. Do you, do you mean like that strip where Sammy is talking to Frank Santoro Sr.? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean not like, you don't mean like sketchbook drawings and posters. You mean like actual comics about other cartoonists, and like yeah, comics yeah. about cartoonists having adventures? You got the, the Klaus and Heisinger one. That's like a good. Always a good one. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling to think of any contemporary examples of like, you know, cartoonist hanging out type comics. Um, they must be out there by just being stuff that I'm not reading or, or not seeing. Yeah. We've uh, we got, we got our tastes and our lanes. It's likely, yeah. Wally Groper says, Simon, what did you have for breakfast? Which we already answered this. Johnny Come Lately coming into the chat for the second half. And trying to steal Nate Garcia's bit. That is a trademark bit. Yep. Right. What's this? Something about the Klaus book about it. Vintage publishing. Jonathan Cape publishes Fantadiki for Europeans. Oh, okay. So that's what someone was talking about. The, you're going to get the Fantagraphics or the vintage Klaus. So, yes, you're talking about the Jonathan Cape uh, British ones. And, yes, indeed, for Europeans, you should probably be buying those. I remember in Patience, like Jonathan Cape did Patience. And they just left the fanographics lettering in the front. Like there was this big, like artsy fantographics block lettering, and they just fucking the editors just fucking spaced on it and published it with fanographics. Like the European Fulgencio Pimentel one, they changed it from fanographics to Fulgencio Pimentel. The designer worked on it and changed it at some, you know, cost of time and work to them. They weren't going to ask Dan to do it. He probably would have said, "Fuck off, I'm busy." But yeah, it's really embarrassing that Jonathan Cape did that. Like, really fucking embarrassing that they just like a major release. 
I think they also one publisher like uh, just erased album Born and Mature's name, memory of album Born and Mature, and they just erased that. And I'd imagine wow. if it I was me, to, I'd be pretty fucking pissed off. I used to like those uh, the Jonathan Cape ones. The, the, the versions always had like the bumpy covers. It was like a very textured covers. All right, Simon's frozen again. Simon did do comics about cartoonists in Truth Zone. Yeah, in the past. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Orhencio Pimentel is top notch editing. Yep, true. Girlboys isn't necessarily known for their rigorous journalistic standards. I agree. Yeah, I think uh, over there they're not, you know, they don't really know what they're doing over there. Just kind of uh, winging it. We hit 1K and uh, Simon wasn't here to see it. That's a shame. All right, let's see if Simon rejoins in the next couple minutes. Otherwise, I'll end this stream. What am I listening to? Actually, I'll tell you. Let me go on Spotify. Q theme song. You can't uh, just you can't deal with me for a bit. My most played stuff right now is uh, Future Islands, The Muffs. I was listening to The Muffs a lot today. I don't know if any of you guys are The Muffs. Great band. Jeff Rosenstock's new album. Really fucking good. Um, pay for pain. It's a sad boy wicker phase adjacent stuff. Yeah, the Jeff Rosenstock album, the new one. I'd recommend getting that. Um, Hell mode, I think it's called. Uh, yeah. Spotify user. Why is this guy? Why is why is channel mate? Why is Hitler making fun of me? Saying, cue the theme song like it's not good enough to just have me here and making fun of me for using Spotify. Save me. We didn't lose it, did we? No, no, we're still live. Oh, good. You're still in here. Sorry about that. Yeah, I don't know. The internet's just dropping out again. Um, it was fine. I was giving my uh, sort of music recommendations. What's that? I was giving musical recommendations and somebody was making fun of me uh, for using Spotify. Hitler was making fun of me for using Spotify. <laughs> I use Spotify. I, I've only used it for like the last, like this year, I think I got into Spotify and I love it. Um, I, I wish I'd used it earlier. I can yeah. just instantly li listen to whatever I want. I hear about something, I just go over and listen to it. It's all there. Basically, I mean, some stuff isn't not weird, really weird stuff. But yeah. Yeah, anyway. what, what were you talking about? What sort of music were you recommending? I was just saying the new Jeff Rosenstock album, Future Islands. I've been listening to a lot. What else was there? Oh, yeah. Muffs. I was listening to a lot today. Yeah, that's it, really. I'm still just listening to my raps, uh, all my weird raps, uh, Haunted Mound and Shed Theory, and just yeah, who are mortal yeah. enemies. So Haunted Mound and Shed Theory are like you know mortal, like ideological enemies, but I, I like them both. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I've been listening to a lot of um, the, the Polaris album, that Pete and Pete soundtrack. I've been listening to that on my bike rides. And um, uh, what else? A bit of pavement, going back to a bit of pavement. That's nice bike riding music. Um, yeah. But yeah, new stuff. I, I don't know. I just listen to my weird raps. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Should probably talk about last week. Tupac, they found the guy. They, they got the guy who killed Tupac. Keith, you did. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. They've been working on it the whole time. Yeah, fucking wild. Apparently, he like admitted to it years ago, but I guess not enough evidence. Yeah, a little bit late, um, but yeah, I'm glad they finally got him. I guess yeah, R.I.P. Tupac. Um, yeah, and it would have been nice uh, if they found the guy when uh, his mum was alive, so his mum could have got some peace. But you know, poor old mum. Yeah, he's. he's his mum probably not around anymore. Maybe she is. Don't know. No, she died um, a couple of years ago. A oh, she did. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, Shug, Shug Knight says it isn't the guy, someone in the comments is saying. Shug. Oh, trust Shug Knight. And how would, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't trust Shug Knight as far as I could throw him. Yeah, it's, speaking of music, someone's mentioned Jimmy Brown in the comments. I should, we should plug Jimmy Brown, Josh. You did the T-shirt recently for Jimmy Brown. We do love Jimmy Brown. It's not a joke music. It's not comedy music. It's a very serious. We should plug that if you're uh, in the Philadelphia area or just in the tri-state area, uh, go see him with Afro Man. <laughs> I know it's so funny. Jimmy Brown is supporting Afro Man. This is funny because so I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to see what Afro Man is up to. This so I looked at his Twitter and he's very much just getting blown on Twitter. Like uh, <laughs> he just posts videos of himself getting blowjobs. That's incredible. Isn't he the Because I Got High guy? Is that the song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was in a Japanese restaurant. They were playing that the other week. They were playing this like dirty kind of stoner music in like a family restaurant. I was kind of like there with my kid. I'm like, what? Can you not play this shit in here? But, yeah. you know, good to see you still going. And Jimmy Brown is supporting him. Pretty fun. Yeah. But anyway, should I wrap it up, Josh? Get back to work. I got to finish this strip, the anthology. I'm sure you've got to do and a dog to walk, maybe. Um, Spoiler, but yeah. Well, about the dog walking. Yeah, yeah. A <laughs> big dog walking spoiler. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Get back to work. I'm gonna finish this page. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for. Everyone, uh, we do another video this week, probably. I don't know, another one tomorrow or something. Josh, try and get a guest in, or we'll figure something out. But yeah, maybe we'll even bash out two short ones, and uh, these people can get a uh, manga chat every day. Sky's the limit. Let's kayfabe this shit. All right, bang. Love you, buddy. See you. See you, yeah, fans. Bye. Love you all. Love you, Crap Master Zach. Bang. <laughs>